love to hear about. Uh, we can talk about coyotes. Okay. What were you going to say? We can talk about cruise ships having a run on I've got a lot of cruise ships. Yeah. Like, yeah. Can we talk about cruise ships? Sure. Okay, so today we're going to talk about cruciate ligament injury. Um, one of the most common ligament injuries in a dog is when their cruciate ligament is damaged. The cruciate ligament is in their back leg, in their knee. Um, their cruciate, there's two, they cross each other in an X, that's how they get their name, cruciate. And the cruciate ligaments allow the knee to bend like a hinge and they prevent the knee from moving like a drawer. So if a dog's knee moves like a drawer, by definition, you know that it has torn its cruciate ligament. And that's how we diagnose cruciate ligament injury. We don't use an x-ray, it's manipulation of the knee. Sometimes the history is that they were lame on their back leg and then they felt better. And then they were limping and then they felt better. And then finally the day comes where they're limping and they don't get better. Uh, and the reason is because we call it the cruciate ligament but it's really a thousand fibers, and it's possible for them to tear 10% of those or 25%. Their knees puffy and sore, um, but then the inflammation goes down, they feel better, and then the next weekend they chase a squirrel and they tear another 15%. And the point is that these don't grow back. So, unfortunately, when there's partial injury on the cruciate, it often eventually leads to full failure of the, uh, of the ligament. And the, the, there's a couple different problems with that. This knee, which is supposed to bend like a hinge, if it is spending time moving like a drawer, that in, its, in and of itself causes inflammation and swelling and pain. Um, but then also, oh, I have a model. Except I don't have it to be um, uh, Inside the knee joint, there are these little bumpers called meniscus. And the meniscus are like shock absorbers, and they distribute the weight from the round femur as it steps down on the flat tibia. And when the knee is moving like a drawer, there's a chance that those meniscus are gonna get moved or shifted or torn or folded. And if the meniscus gets folded up and then they're walking on a crumpled meniscus, it's painful and it would be as if you had a rock in your shoe. And every time you step down, you feel that point of pressure. So when we repair a cruciate ligament injury, we're trying to achieve a couple things. We're trying to cause stabilization so the knee does not move like a drawer. And if there's any um, injury to the meniscus, we need to fix it or remove the injured meniscus so that they don't have the sensation of walking on a rock. Um, there are various ways that this injury can be managed um, for large, Active athletic dogs, large meaning over 40 pounds, our best recommendation is that our, our clients take their pets to an orthopedic surgeon. We often work with Southern California Surgical. Dr. Ike does a fantastic job of this procedure. He did your dog, right? And um, uh, the effect of that surgery that he does, uh, the, the term is a tibial plateau leveling osteotomy. Um, the point is that you and I stand with our knee very straight, and so when we're standing, our tibia, the top of that flat bone, is horizontal with the floor, so we have a flat surface to stand on. But when a dog is standing, as you know, they're standing with their ankle bent and their knee bent, and because of that, their tibia is tipped relative to the floor, so that every time they take a step, their femur, the end of their uh, thigh bone, is trying to slide off the back of their tibia. And that's what often leads to the failure of the cruciate ligament. One of the ways to solve this dilemma is to cheat, is to change the physics. And that's essentially what's done in a TPLO surgery. This is the tibia, this is the plateau on top. TPLO, tibial plateau leveling osteotomy. What that means is that the bone is cut with a radial saw in an arc the tibia plateau is repositioned so that it is now horizontal with the, with the ground when the dog is stepping on it. So that the effect is, even though they're walking with their ankle bent and their knee bent, they're no longer trying to slide off the back of their tibia with their femur. And so, the drawer motion stops and there's no ongoing damage to the, the, uh, to the meniscus. Does that make sense? 
Um, uh, if you were to take that knee, you could still move it like a drawer, but the point is nobody does that. And after the surgery, when they're walking, they're not causing that recurrent injury. And that works great. It's really cool, it's really fancy, and it is somewhat expensive. For dogs that are under 40 pounds, who are not expecting an athletic life, there is an alternative procedure. Uh, and that alternative is to replace the function of the now torn cruciate ligament with a piece of suture material. Uh, the term is extra capsular stabilization. And that's the procedure that we do here at Marina Hills. Uh, and essentially what you're doing is you're using monofilament nylon suture, think really big fishing line, not fishing line, but like that, strength, to replace the function of the cruciate ligament. Any synthetic material that you want to name will eventually break. It doesn't matter if it's nylon or steel or titanium. If you cycle it enough times, it will fatigue and it will break. And it turns out that what we really need is we have to stabilize this joint for about a 90-day period. Because over a 90-day period, the body is going to respond to the suture material by forming a heavy-duty scar. And that scar tissue is stronger than any suture material ever would be. And the scar tissue is living tissue that will survive and sustain and replace itself over time to stabilize the knee joint. So the real key to this procedure is we're trying to get the scar tissue to form to stabilize this joint so it can bend like a hinge and no longer move like a drawer. Um, uh, so the surgery, as you guys have seen it know, um, of course it's aseptic preparation, it's approaching the joint to look inside, evaluate the meniscus, if they're damaged, deal with that, remove the remnants of the cruciate ligament, close up the joint. We often will inject anesthesia into the joint at that point so that they're not in pain as they're waking up or as the procedures continue. <clears throat> and then we drill a hole in the front of the tibia so that we have a place to put the suture on that lower leg bone. Uh, we make it go up behind a little bone on the back side of the femur, it's called the flabella, and we make a figure eight loop and tie it down. And we tighten it enough that the knee now can't do this, but it can only bend like a hinge. Um, uh, then that whole thing gets sewn up. The, the recovery is important because we don't want them being too active too soon and tearing up our incision uh, and breaking down the suture. Uh, and so we really have them strictly confined for about a two week period. Uh, and then it's a slow return to activity. Uh, now what's interesting is that some dogs are very careful and they recognize that they're injured and they don't try to use their leg too much too soon. However, some dogs are crazy pants and they will try to do too much too soon. So uh, some of these dogs we're having to really strictly confine them so that they don't try to run and chase the mailman and tear up the suture, you know, the surgery. Um, conversely, it is important that, the, that their joint be moved during the healing process. Uh, because if a joint is simply still, if they don't move it at all for a full six week period, it will actually freeze in place. Uh, and some dogs at the other extreme, they are very timid and they won't move their joint enough. Uh, and so for those dogs, we have to do physical therapy, passive range of motion. Um, and so what we're looking for is a dog that's not doing too much and tearing it up, but if they're trying to do too little, then we encourage them. Uh, with, and, we, and of course, you guys know we have those um, uh, the instructions for the range of motion therapy after the procedure. Uh, and then it's a matter of you know getting the incision to heal, removing the sutures after about 10 to 14 days, um, doing the physical therapy, managing their pain um, with uh, narcotics and anti-inflammatories, and in the cases when the meniscus has been damaged, we often use Adequan as well for those guys post op That's how we manage Christians. Any questions? Yeah. So the meniscus, you only deal with the meniscus if it's been damaged. And that's true whether it's a TPLO surgery or whether it's an extra catheter stable surgery. The key is you have to look at it and figure out is it where it's supposed to be, is it been torn, is it folded up, and then deal with whatever you find used to it. So you can't determine that without actually doing surgery looking at it? 
I can't. Um, the two ways, there's several ways that you might approach that question. The question was, can you evaluate the meniscus without doing surgery? Um, uh, if you did arthroscopy with a little tiny camera on a stick, you could look inside the joint and look at the meniscus. Uh, we don't do that here, but some of the specialty centers do. And in theory, you could do an MRI of a knee, and the MRI would tell you what, where the cartilage is and what shape the meniscus is in. But I don't know if any of the surgeons are doing that. I think they, I think they, well, the meniscus generally is not damaged in a dog unless they have a cruciate injury. And since the way you fix a cruciate is you have to stabilize it, you just deal with it when you get in there. Yeah. So they don't usually, I don't think, need to do any MRIs prior to the procedure. That's a good question. Anything else? So it's weird. We haven't done a cruciate, what, in three or four months? And we're going to do three of them this week. All right. So one tomorrow, one Monday, one next week. All right. That's it.